Hey guys, welcome to the last part of creating 3D medieval boots. In this part we're gonna do the most fun part and we're gonna be creating the textures. To start off any kind of texture, we're gonna make a folder and we're gonna put a base fill layer in it. And in this fill layer, we're just gonna set the base values of our textures. Now on the folder we're gonna create a mask with the ID. We're just gonna select the colors where we want the folder to apply. So as this is the leather folder, I'm just gonna select all the leather parts. You can tweak with the sliders to get a good mask. I'm gonna drag a smart material in for the metal parts. And I'm not creating a folder and doing it from scratch as this is a small material and I don't want to spend too much time on it. I just want to have it quickly in there. Now on the mask I'm just going to select all the objects that I want the mask to be applied to. So let's tweak the slider a bit more so it's capturing the sole as well on the mask. So now I'm just spinning around my model checking if I like the base. For part 2 of this video we're gonna be working on the stitches. So I'm just gonna drag a hue saturation filter. And let's do that two times, one for the color and one for the roughness. And you want to make sure that you put the blending mode on pass through or it will not work. And the reason why I'm using saturation filters and not fill layers is because if I edit the base values, I want it to update on the stitches as well. So let's select the stitches on the ID map. Now if we tweak the slider, you will see that the stitches change in color. And let's do the same for roughness. Now that we're finished with the base, let's move on to part 3, and this creating the details. So like the stitches, I'm gonna be using a hue saturation filter, and I'm gonna make a folder, and I'm gonna call it details. Now we're gonna create a mask on this folder. And in this mask we're gonna put the details. So I'm gonna put a tiling ladder alpha in the slot. And let's change the size of it. Again, we have two hue saturation filters, color and roughness. This time we're also gonna add an extra fill layer and this is gonna be for the height. So now let's disable all except for the height. And when we change the slider, you can see the detail mask coming through. And of course we can also edit this mask, so we can add the levels and then we can play with it. And 
And now for the color, we can change the slider and you will see it change the color according to the mask. So just play with it until you get something that you like. And I'm not liking how the color is coming through, so I'm gonna edit the levels a bit. But that's also not working for me, I still don't like it. So I'm gonna change out the alpha and we're gonna put a new texture in the detail mask. And as you can see, now the color is working a lot better. I'm just gonna tweak the height again, as the height is now messed up. You see how easy it is to change things now. At any point I can come into my mask, and just change the texture out and we get a new look. So like we did with the color, we're doing the same with the roughness, we're just adding some breakup. Now that we have some details, let's go and layer our materials. So now that we put everything in a folder called leather top, we're gonna make a new fill layer. This is gonna be the material underneath the leather. So just edit the values until you get something that you like. Now on leather top we're gonna make a mask and we're gonna select where the material should be applied. Now you can see we're starting to get a nice leather material where we have a nice shiny leather on top and a rough leather underneath. So I'm also making a new fill layer, and this is gonna be the sole material. Now that we have a nice layered leather material, 
We're gonna add some color variation to the ladder. And you always want to add color variation to any material that you make. That's something that will push it to be more realistic. Now that we have some variation, let's do some layer masking. And the idea is that we push the surface from being like perfectly clean to having some wear and tear. So we want to make an extra folder where we put the folder in. This just so we can have multiple masks. So now we're gonna apply a smart mask. And let's go ahead and hit the invert. And now you can see that we have some wear and tear. Where the underneath leather material is popping through some damage. So now I'm just gonna spend some time tweaking the mask and to have some wear and tear that I like.
just like we did earlier we're gonna add some color variation for the main ladder And to really push your material, you want to add some breakup in your roughness. So I'm just going to add an extra HSL filter. This time I'm going to apply to the roughness. I'm going to drag it up. Now you can see that the roughness is starting to have some nice breakup. And as one of the final touches to textures, I like to put my curvature on a layer and put the blending mode on overlay. And this is just going to add a lot of depth to your textures. So now you can see all the time that we spent on the high poly, we're actually getting some of the details back into the textures. And sometimes it's good to invert the roughness because sometimes it's just popping up the wrong way like you want to have the rough parts to be inverted And as one of the last steps, we're going to create a folder on top of all our materials. And here we're just going to add some wear. So this can be anything that you think of. We can add some blood, we can add some mud, some sand, just whatever pops up in your mind. We can create some fill layers to create some dirt. And this step is really going to give some character to your textures. And it's going to make the materials blend in together better. And it's gonna be some storytelling in your textures. 
Because this is a viking, it's been through battle so it has some blood on it. And think about how it's always walking through muddy landscapes, so we're also gonna add some mud to it. And this way you can tell a story through your textures. And yeah, that was the last part in this series of creating 3D medieval boots. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next videos.